ஹாய் இப்போ வந்து நாங்கள் குக் பண்ண போகிறோம் என்ன பண்ண போகிறோம் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா சிக்கன் சிந்தாமணி அப்புறம் வந்து ஓகே சிக்கன் சிந்தாமணி இல்லை வந்து குயிக் அண்ட் ஹெல்த்தி சிக்கன் கறி அண்ட் பீட் தோசை ஸோ இப்போ தான் வெங்காயம் எல்லாம் உரிச்சிட்ருக்காங்க அதை பார்க்கலாம் ஸோ நீங்கள் எல்லாம் என்ன பண்ணுறீங்க ஸோ நெக்ஸ்ட் என்ன டிஷ் பண்ணணுன்னு கூட நீங்கள் கமெண்ட்டில் சொல்லுங்கள் நான் வந்து See, Bennett is doing... So for this chicken curry that I, I'm going to make for dinner, it's going to be very light. It's not going to be like a thick gravy or anything. And, uh, and it's going to be a healthy uh, way of cooking. So the most healthy thing uh, is adding vegetables to your protein-rich food. Uh, dinner so for with the chicken uh, for the chicken curry i have chosen to add shallots here in the local market they are called as uh, sambar onions chinna you know, yeah. ma yeah so uh, these are uh, very easy to get in the market and they are a better alternative than using uh, big onions or the ones that they call savala that better than that is this so because they have a lot more of vitamins and and uh, all sorts of minerals that is necessary for our body on day to day basis so today i'm going to use this for my chicken curry and um, peeling them is most people prefer the big onions because this is a hectic work to peel these onion small onions so i'm going to show you an easy and quick method which i will be using in order to peel and clean these onions so uh, preferably when you buy them from the market itself make sure you choose to buy round and nice ones unlike these tiny tiny ones like these because the tiny yeah they are to become to getting deep make sure you buy fresh you can find that they'll be easier to peel so what i'm doing is i chop the top edge off from the shallot and the bottom edge so that gives me a nice grip over the peel and then all i do is just peel off this way so there you go easy way of peeling shallots you can see i'm just removing the first layer because that's that was easy to remove now for the second layer top of the head and the tail and just make a small slit on the peel a very superficial slit and what i usually do is i keep them peeled and washed and put them in the fridge in a air tight bag so whenever i require them they will be all always ready and i can just use them so today in order to show you how to peel i am making this all the way from the scratch make sure after you cleaned it even though the shallots may look visibly clean just make sure you run uh, uh, run it under a tap of water and wash them again thoroughly because there may be residues of black uh, sand and uh, other other particles in between the layers another thing we fa- uh, we do could be faced with when peeling shallots is the pungent smell of the shallot is going to make your eyes tear so it would be good uh, what i find as a solution for that is 
keep them at a distance away from my eye if you are not able to help keeping them very far away from your eye then you could always have the fan or an exhaust on so that the the particles that are released from the shelves which cause the tearing of your eyes are sucked away from the atmosphere and and so you can be saved from teary eye or i just turn on the fan so that the smell is driven away from over my face like i said make sure you use fresh shallots one thing i always want to maintain is clean kitchen before cooking because that's if you have a very untidy kitchen it's very difficult to get into the mood of cooking something delicious so i ensure i keep my vessels all washed and tucked away into its place so that i have enough and more space when i'm cleaning my vegetables and even when when cleaning vegetables like these shallots and things i make sure i keep a vessel like this underneath it to hold the waste that i'm peeling off and don't let them flying around all over the kitchen table or all over the floor on the kitchen because then it becomes very untidy and you lose you you tend to feel uh, very lazy to go on cooking it changes your mood when things are untidy but when they are systematically kept and arranged it's much more easier and pleasant to cook in shallots have much better taste also than the bigger onions so taste wise also i prefer shallots over the bigger onions i have heard that uh, it is good for diabetic people because it regulates your blood sugar level keeps it at check also for people suffering from high blood pressure and things like that it doesn't drastically decrease or increase but it keeps it at check so including this in your daily diet would be beneficial for keeping these sort of lifestyle cost diseases at bay these days especially during this because situation where we were stuck in those every
so these days because of the pandemic situation and the lockdown which which <laughs> these days because of the pandemic situation and which caused all of us to be indoors in our house houses we've all gotten so accustomed to cooking and eating regularly and trying out new dishes because of which we actually gave a slip of thinking about our health and uh, home food is always healthy yes but uh, when we try out new dishes and especially the western dishes we tend to forget about our health so this is a good way of coming back to healthy eating now uh, once somebody told me that you should never consume chicken at night because they are high in protein but uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut out uh, totally on other carbohydrates and not have rice during the day or night so the little amount of carbohydrates and go in through wheat is very minimal so that's why i'm opting for this sort of a curry I got one bowl full of shallots what to do now i'm just going to wash them and just pat dry them on my kitchen towel so i'm going to put the napkin here i'm just going to like Shallots are ready. Next, I'll uh, just keep them. Chop them and keep them ready. So I have another bowl here. Keep the chopped shallots. I'm going to chop them, die section, uh, like a uh, diagonal, like like this. So they have their cross section. Take your time at doing this because when you're slicing them thin cross-sectional pieces like this, there are chances of cutting your hand or injuring yourself. So don't be in a hurry.
keep your exhaust fans on so that the pungent smell of this uh, shallots are sucked away and you can save yourself from teary eyes. Yes, however you try to save your eyes, they still will end up suffering. Chopping onions. So this is the portion I most dislike because of what it does to my eyes and I'm glad I'll be done with this as soon as possible so there we are shallots are all chopped and ready so as I told you this is a very quick chicken curry so I don't have many ingredients for this chicken curry the main ingredients are chicken and shallots so I have my shallots right chopped and ready and now I have my chicken I'm just using like quarter kg of chicken here I think this must be quarter or half kg maybe a little more than a quarter kg of chicken here washed and drained in this vessel and I've kept it aside next what I'll be needing is cooking oil so what I'm going to do is get my cooker I here have my uh, cooker ready and in this cooker I'm just going to add cooking oil so cooking oil and uh, along with cooking oil I've, I'm also putting in some spices this is a spice so I'm putting I think these are called as uh, no they're not cumin I'm not sure what these are called See, I, cumin is the other one right so this is called as See, uh, I'm not sure what this is but here take a close look at what it is yeah this Cumin is this one. There's a difference between cumin and this is cumin here. And this is what I'm using. This is slightly bigger and green and longer. Okay, uh, so he says that both are called the same. But I what think it's different. This is not cumin. This is no. something else. Malayalam? In Malayalam, I don't know what it is in Malayalam either. Tamil? I don't know. Siragam. Yeah, so this is, uh, as he what? says, is jiragam in... Jiragam, siragam. Yes, that, but I don't think it is jira, it's, uh, it's, it's something else. Because jira is cumin. So I'm going to add this. So just, like around one spoon. 
I'm not using a spoon because it's directly from the bottle. Now I want one spoon. And to this, I'm going to drop in the chopped shallots. And washed, chopped, washed and dried chicken pieces. Now for the next thing, as I told you, these the main ingredients are just chicken and shallots. And now for the main chicken masalas. So I have my chicken masala kept in a container like this, stored in a container. You can use any chicken masala. The brand doesn't matter. Just take one spoon of chicken masala. So if you're using a spoon like this, two. If you're using a bigger spoon, just one spoon. I used one spoon of chicken masala. And one spoon of meat masala. The reason I'm using meat masala is just one spoon. You can uh, use garam masala instead of meat masala. That is also optional. But I'm using meat masala because I don't have garam masala with me here right now. And next I'm going for Kashmiri chili powder. The, why Kashmiri chili powder? Because I want the color. This is not for the spice. This is just for color. So it's not necessary you need to use a lot of this. So one spoon of Kashmiri chili powder. And then now for spice one spoon of normal chili powder that is dried chili the normal chili powder that we use there this is for the spice i like my curry spicy so and one spoon of pepper i like to add pepper into every dish that i cook they're very tasty and next so one spoon of coriander powder Actually, not one spoon. I'm gonna go for a little extra because I didn't have. Uh, I had garam masala. <coughs> yes, and now salt. As you can see, I don't use the normal salt. I use Himalayan rock salt. So I'm gonna put a little extra. But if you are gonna use uh, the normal table salt that we usually use for cooking, make sure you take lesser amount. So Himalayan rock salt is not actually very salty, so I'm going to use a little more. I have noticed that it requires a little more. So please be careful with this amount of salt that you use if you are using the normal rock salt, normal salt, table salt. Now I'm going to add in some curry leaves. What is an Indian curry without curry leaves? Here are my curry leaves, a handful of curry leaves. Next, I'm just going to keep this away and I have garlic, the peeled garlic already kept here, a handful of peeled garlic which I'm going to add into the curry. peel garlic along with that we need around one and a half inch long ginger you can use ginger garlic paste but I prefer fresh ginger you can either you can also crush it or just chop it and drop it in i will just chop it and drop it into the cooker because this is going to cook anyhow so all the juices from the ginger is going to enter into the curry so i don't have to really crush it
comments? No, Murugan Govinda says it looks nice. Arumai. Thank you. Say Nandri. Thank you, Murugan. And do try out this dress. Where I have the ginger here. I want this much of ginger. There is like this was just one piece, which was like around one and a half inch long. Now I'm just gonna put this aside and chop them into smaller pieces. Like I said, I'm not going to crush them or make them into a paste. You can do it if you want to. You want more. Uh, more gingery taste you could do that but anyhow it's gonna get all cooked in the cooker so i'm just gonna eat them at that uh, chopping them to be into small slices here again ginger is one of those again ginger here is one of the vegetables that actually is good to consume on an everyday basis you can have them with any dish even add them to your tea or coffee have them dry have them fresh have them powdered have them pasted anything the flavor is just beautiful make sure you use fresh ginger So I have them chopped into small pieces right now. It's not small enough, so I'm just going to use our knife and make them a little more smaller. The way I do it is like this. Here's a larger knife. you can see I don't have any more large chunks of ginger or tiny tiny chunks of ginger now this entire thing I'm going to add to the pot chicken so all our ingredients are done and now
now I'm just going to add one pot full of fresh clean water here. Why one pot full? Because uh, I want a lot of gravy and as I told you earlier, there's not going to be much thick gravy. This is a very uh, thin gravy, so I need a lot of gravy. So if you don't want much gravy, you can always reduce the amount of water. I'm going to give this a stir. I already am getting a nice tangy smell here. You can see it already it is in the form of a curry. It's not cooked though. Now I'm going to just close this. chicken curry and the third whistle is ready so meanwhile i need to make my wheat dosa with beans so i'm gonna pull out the greens i'm gonna pull out the greens the kind of greens i'm using today for my wheat dosa is mint mint and meaty Meaty or fennel seed leaves. These are the fennel seed leaves. Oh, is that called fennel? No, right? This is fenugreek seeds uh, leaves. Yeah, that. This, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm not very sure of what that green uh, virgum kind of thing was. So they're called fennel seeds. Yeah, these, these are fennel seeds. So I've added these to the chicken curry. And now. For the green dosa, green wheat dosa, I'm going to add, here you see, this is called methi leaves or... Vendayam. What? Vendayam. Yeah, that, Vendayam. What? Vendayam in Tamil, he says. I'm not sure. And uh, in Malayalam, I don't, I think this is methi leaves. I don't know what it is. Sorry. Uh, and in English, they are called as fenugreek seed leaves. So I'm just going to pluck out a few. Make you can always use fresh leaves, preferable. You can instead if you do if you don't have if you're not. Having fresh leaves, you can always go for the dry methi leaves, dried methi leaves. What I do is I keep them fresh in, freshly packed in the fridge so that when it's time to use, I can just pluck them off like this and use them. I have washed them once I got them from the supermarket and put them in a nice fresh ziploc bag so these are very rich in iron now the benefit of making a healthy and a little bit rich uh, dinner like this is you can always have the leftover for breakfast along with a nice cup of coffee or tea. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna just keep the rest of the seeds away, sleeves away. I've just taken as much as I need. I'm going to put the rest of the leaves into the pot. I've taken as much as I need. I'm putting back the rest. 
Now, I have taken a handful of methi leaves or what they call as fenugreek seed leaves. These are very rich in iron and uh, they are very good for hair, growth of hair and cools your body I have heard. Now as I told you I like to have clean kitchen tables. So. So I have a handful of meaty beets and another handful of mint leaves. I have mint leaf already here, kept in for the block pack like this. And now this leaves i'm just going to mix both of them together remember i've already washed them and put them in the fridge in the ziploc bags so there's no need of washing but if you are using fresh one that you just got from the supermarket make sure you wash the leaves properly because they tend to have sand and the mud particles stuck to them on the leaves so wash them prop thoroughly and dry them before you place them in the fridge or start using them for cooking i'm going to take a small pan like this ready here. I'm going to add just just amount as much as I need. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'm just going to take half a spoon of ghee. Pour it in the vessel and heat it. Now these leaves, I just need them fried in this little ghee that's placed here. So what I'm going to do is... Rojit is on it. Hi Rojit. Hey Rojit, what are you doing? My ghee, uh, ghee is heated. Now I'm just going to add and the mint leaf and then lightly fry them. I don't want them overcooked or anything. I just want them lightly fried. You see now it's called fresh green color and as I'm frying it you can see the change in the leaf color. Too deeply fried, directly. I don't eat it. The leaf is ready. I'm gonna set this aside. And now for making the weak dosa. So usually what we do is when we hear dosa we think of a fermented dish. Right? Dosa is kept overnight and fermented and then we use it the next day. Even idli and any of those kind of things and appam and everything is fermented but for, uh, for, for the health sake I don't want to add any make them uh, make the dish fermented or add any yeast or anything because the yeast and everything converts the starch or the carbohydrates into uh, yes, so the yeast and ferment and anything that ferments it 
anything that ferments a dish is go to make more of glucose or glyc glycinic uh, elements into the food so i don't want to add any of that instead i'm going to make it fresh so like just like chapati the we just immediately cook it once we mix the dough it's just like that i'm just going to immediately cook the batter as soon as i've done mixing it so for that have you i'm going to use a container like this it's just two of us so i'm just taking a small vessel and smaller amount of uh, wheat but if you have more than two people serving use the double of what i'm using so i get a nice smell from this where i've kept my wheat powder so this is my wheat powder tin or atta tin i'm going to take one scoop full of wheat atta and this is my second scoop full of atta and a half actually just a little more you can use the double of what i have used if there are more number now like i said earlier this is just like making chapati so i add just a pinch of salt if you have table salt just add a pinch i have himalayan rock salt so i'm adding a little bit more mm hmm i'm taking my container spoon mixing both the salt and atta together mix it up and i have a kettle full of warm water it's not hot it's warm i'm just going to add that this will by little into this mixing it till i have a flowy batter just like when making you can see i poured water into the atta and i'm mixing it keep mixing it till you have a flowy consistency of just like uh, for dosa batters use more water as required as and when required This is the same as we make chapati. So this is my third application. I'm going to offer it again. Hey, Trishan, now on the phone layer, can I? So just now, from the phone layer, can I? Can you reply? Can I reply? Can I reply? See my batter is still thick, 
it's not into a flowy consistency and you see it's not flowy yet plenty of water for making it into the flowy dosa consistency keep stirring i have used a very small vessel here you can use a bigger vessel to avoid getting your hands dirty ஓகே இப்போ நம்ம சிக்கன் வந்து ஆல்மோஸ்ட் ஆயிடுச்சு இப்போ பாருங்கள் ஸோ நல்லா ஆயிடுச்சு இந்த சிக்கன் பேர் என்ன சிக்கன் பெங்களூர் No, all jokes apart, this is a very healthy chicken curry. I'm still... ப்ரோஜித் இருக்கியா இல்லையா Keep mixing until there are no lumps. What is this? So now I've uh, removed the spoon and put my hand in and I'm removing the lumps one by one like these. You can see it's a flowy consistency but I still have lumps in here. So I'm removing the lumps. this would not have happened if you added the mixture atta into water see the atta and added it slowly into the water but uh, that way i would not know the quantity of water required you know if you are very if you used to doing this then you can know the quantity of water and start doing it that way
So you can see I, my batter is ready. There is a very flowy batter here. The fried uh, fenugreek seed leaves and uh, mint leaves that we had fried in a little bit of ghee that's kept here aside. I'm going to add that into the batter that I have here. And give it a nice stir. chop the leaves also if you want it in small small particles i like having chunks like this to chew on while i have my dosa so i have left them as big leaves itself if you want them as tiny particles you can um, chop the leaves and then fry them i like it when they are chunky like this whatever you prefer you can do now here's the chicken curry okay. steam is all come it is steam is all gone now I'm gonna open it and you can see tasty chicken curry. And with this my last last ingredient is again dry kasuri methi leaves. I'm gonna add them lavishly because I love the smell of these. You can either garnish them with kasturi methi leaves or coriander leaves or, or uh, oregano or anything you prefer. I prefer kasturi methi leaves. They are awesome. I love the smell of it. So I've garnished it. Now I'm just going to close it and keep it aside until I make the dosa. Now I have the dosa pan here. Watch the dosa. Which one will you use? I'm going to taste on this. We'll taste it as well as the dosa. Okay. I have my dosa pan here. Now, I'm just going to take a cooking brush. Droplets of water particles on the pan. So let them dry properly. So all the water particles have dried off. The ghee I had earlier, I'm just going to lightly brush the pan with ghee. Not plenty of ghee, just lightly. Now the batter. 
freshly ready the it hasn't fermented or anything freshly ready and prepared the pan is heated this is not like dosa so you don't have to like spread it around hota has a very sticky consistency so you just pour in and just let do its work let the heat do its work Now you can see as it's getting heated you can see the sides are getting cooked first so when you start seeing the middle portion now also getting changing color and get, getting cooked then you can use your pan i mean your your uh, spoon or whatever to just flip it over spatula spoon or whatever to flip it over So you can see it's cooked. Do you see? It's cooked, nice, hot, and green dosas. Putting in my next batter. So I have the second dosa ready. This one is slightly brushed. That's the chicken curry. Somebody can't wait till dinner. He has to taste and see. How is it? Ah, come on.
So the chicken has turned out yummy, it seems. To speak about it. How was the taste? Yeah, chicken was some army on the yeah. Oh, but taste are good. So we are good. There are not a book, but yeah, yeah. இதெல்லாம் பார்த்துட்டு பசி அடுக்கிறது தான் ரொம்ப கஷ்டமான ஒரு விஷயம் I believe that cooking is an art and those who cook are of a special are of a special kind of artist themselves so it, you don't have to be perfect art is never perfect sometimes the most imperfect thing is the most beautiful art piece so in cooking also I believe that you don't have to be really perfect and get a perfect circle here or anything and one more thing I feel is it's it's the best experience to be serving people you love. So when I cook, I keep in mind the health and the and the taste and the and and the the person the person that I cook for. So uh, it's me. I like serving people, and I'm especially when they say it's tasty. But one thing we all have to remember is it's not in the quantity. Or the quality it's in the effort that put, that is put in to make something for someone or the attitude that we have when we serve most people especially think that uh, food is a very important part of the life and it's more like you live to eat it's not like that we eat so that we can live so when you have very tasty food also think of the fact that whatever you eat has to help you live, not vice versa. This proverb is for whom? This is not a proverb. This is just a small Make prep it. talk. Hmm? So when you eat something, you have to keep in mind your health also. Food is not God. Food was food is something from ages onwards all of us are consuming. So do respect it and don't waste it because there are many people who don't have it. So acknowledge the privilege of eating but don't treat it like it's the sole factor that we are alive for. Hey, Sometimes there are many things that you want to just out burst out and tell it on people's faces. But there are times when you have to keep up your decency and keep quiet. But you still need to convey the what you have in your mind. So this is a good opportunity that I had so I could convey what I want to do to certain people. Hey, <laughs> 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 
until we are heating up in trouble. So I still have my batter left which I am going to put in the fridge. You can leave it overnight if you want it fermented a little bit but I don't want it fermented as I said earlier. So I am going to just leave it into the fridge. Now, as I said, cooking is also an art. Just like cooking, serving beautifully is all the food that you have prepared is also an art. The perfection of cooking would be when you serve it in a very pleasant way. So, I'm going to serve it in my serving bowl here. The smell is awesome. Here, it's a beautiful color of green and yellow, and the last close up. The last close up was still being by me. So, there it is. I'm going to serve it. So I'm going to serve dinner here. The best part of eating home cooked food is eating it together with your family. What are you?
कंप्यूटर ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू ईट बाय थैंक्स फॉर वाचिंग ये संजीव बात एप्पलीर कंसोल है गुड नाइट